Hi folks, welcome to a very special edition of Diplomacy Academy. On Memorial Day weekend, David Hood held a virtual DixieCon, the first event of its kind at the scale at which it was held. Over 80 players from all around the world participated in two games of diplomacy, one in the morning, one in the evening. Siobhan Nolan, Brandon Fogel, and I participated in a live stream commentary of those games. In these special editions of Diplomacy Academy, I'm packaging those games together so you don't have to sit through the whole 11 hours of our stream to follow one game. Instead, you can go through the commentary game by game. Enjoy, welcome to some very special guests who joined the broadcast, and as always, I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon. Move on to F, Lumbees. Here we've got Austria, Tony Swinnerton, England, Chris Barfield, who was a longtime hobby player, I've never met him. Um, France, Vanessa Smith, also a, a long player, long time player. Germany, Gabe Rash, hopefully I'm saying that right. Italy, Jason Maspaum, who is known to all tournament players everywhere. Russia, Samuel Feldman, and Turkey, uh, Michael Doc Binder. I should change that to just be Doc. Oh, Former yeah. world champion, Doc Binder. Yeah, there we go. And uh, what do we have here, Siobhan? Um, okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, Venice to Trieste, otherwise kind of... Well, no, France. Okay, Paris to Picardy, Marseille to Burgundy. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, France making a play for Belgium here. That's Vanessa. I don't know her play pretty much at all. Chris, you said that yeah, she's, she's a long time face to face player, one of the founding members of the PTKS, along with Tim Richardson and some other folks. Um, so, uh, tends to play aggressively in my yeah. experience, tends to like to find an ally and go pretty hard. So, uh, expect to get some information from the Bills as to which way she's leaning. Okay. So quick reset, this is the board with Jason Massbaum and uh, Doc Bender um, and Chris Barfield, Vanessa Smith as well. And uh, nothing too crazy here. Uh, France uh, puts two units on Belgium and only one on the Iberian. And yeah. Venice Trieste. Trieste. Trieste is the, is the standout move here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see how it progresses. Uh, uh, the Italian puts the knife. Oh. If we had a question of whether it was a knife, it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Austria, is that a knife in my back? Italy? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, France gets Belgium. No. Germany. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, England tries for it, possibly with promises from Germany for support, but Germany covers Munich. Um... Convoy to Tunis again. Bounce in Sweden. Okay. Chris is having a little audio trouble. I'm gonna... Chris, you're uh, you're having a little audio trouble. You're also on a delay, Chris. I think you should uh, disconnect and then reconnect. Yeah, um, and he muted himself. So there we go. Oh, I muted him. It was uh, sometimes. Oh, no, you. Okay. Sometimes it has to be done. Right, you know. Uh, so I mean. There's some interesting stuff. I mean, the Italian just digging that dagger a little deeper and the Austrian is the most interesting. So let's, uh, yeah, let's see. So obviously this doesn't look good for Austria. The question is what, what how does that affect the uh, the board balance in the East? And, and overall? Mm -hmm. Chris, let's get, let's get some noise from you. Are you? Chris, you've got the mic static. Chris, you're giving us a lot of interference on your, uh, from your mic or something. Huh. It sounds like, um, you're, I like you're rubbing up against the mic. Like that. All right. Um, all right. Let's see what the builds are like here. Okay. And then. Okay. Um, yeah. Italy builds Fleet Army. Checks out. Um, Fleet Marseille from France. And okay. two armies from, from Germany. Two, Fleet Marseille. I my audio settings. Is that any better? Uh, no, we're still getting still getting that uh, the noise. Okay. Yeah. 
Someone says maybe take a step away from the mic, which is opposite advice from earlier. Of getting <laughs> <confused, but laughs> he left um, Chris. Yeah. Um, okay, right, so uh, Siobhan, let's talk about uh, these builds in the West. What well, first of all, the German armies? What do they? What do those say to you? Um, that he's not worried about England in the slightest. Um. And we had the Russian going to Finland, actually. We didn't... Uh, oh, the so Russian went to... Oh, we opened to Finland. Oh, we opened we? For, did we miss that the first yeah, time? We did, yeah, we must have missed it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, that was taking a page out of that one live stream day where both boards opened to Finland. Um, I mean, this is either... It's either anti-French or anti-Russian. It's whatever yeah. it is, it's pro-English. It's yeah. pro-English... I don't think he's worried about the Fleet London build. France put down Fleet Marseille. Do you think they're pitching a Western triple here? You know, if it were Fleet Eddie, I would say hell yeah. Um, I think without Fleet Eddie, England's options are are limited for the Western triple, mm -hmm. um, unless he's got a deal to get Sweden, in which case, yeah. in which case he gets Sweden and convoys to Norway. But then, what does he do with Fleet London? Right. I mean. But exactly the problem. It has to be Fleet Eddie in that case. So either it's a bad build for a Western Triple or they're going against France as an EG. I mean the nice thing about the nice thing about this build for England is that you you just don't have to worry about Germany coming at you. And Russia didn't build in St. Petersburg. So um England kind of has this and, and plus with the fleet build in Marseille, I mean England's really got um, a free ride here, just not as much expansion potential as um, as you would want as England. Uh, yeah. So. so, I mean, let's let's see how they play this, but I think that France has problems, but it's going to take them a while to whittle them down. Chris, I see you're back. Hey, uh, I've changed to the microphone that's attached to my webcam. Any better? Uh, much better. better. Much better. Okay. There you go. So Chris, so uh, quick comments here before we move on. We were just talking about the uh, the two army builds combined with the other builds in the West, together at the Western Triple. There's no the fleet build in London versus Eddie is um, complicates that. What do you uh, what do you like and dislike here? Well, if I was Germany, I'd want those armies too. I think it's it's one of those things where you're 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 encouraging France to attack you if you don't put down two armies and you're making yourself a little more vulnerable to Russia, but Russia looks like they have other things that they're trying to accomplish. So it's specifically taking Belgium with an army here, um, plus the army in Burgundy that says to you, Germany built two armies here. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Now yeah. the fleet in Marseille is like, hey man, no no harm, no foul, right? <laughs> um, but it, uh, it's still, you know, the supported move to Ruhr is always a threat. Um, which means that you kind of are stuck putting an army in Kiel, and then a fleet in Berlin is just weaker than a fleet in Kiel. What, so two what, armies. Yeah. What's the fleet in army? Uh, what's the fleet in Berlin going to do? Um, what is it? Go to the Baltic and take Sweden. Yeah. You, know, you go to the Baltic Sea and take Sweden. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The army. What is the army Berlin useful for? Oh, army in Berlin follows. But it's so. Uh, so it should be guaranteed, right? Um, so then you just you're protecting yourself against actually both the French and an English joint attack in this case. Um, yeah. That's yeah. what you're really worried Although, about. Although if they're both common, you're still going to die yeah. um, because you're not you know stopping Helga Light or Skagerrak. And if North cuts Holland, then Ruhr isn't a guarantee. So there's uh, there's bad things that can happen if if you're getting ganged up on as Germany here. But you do kind of ford up a little bit. Is um is your point that going for Sweden in this case actually isn't it's a bit uh, of um sorry what was that yeah I'm saying that like Sweden um, if you are uncertain that you have allies uh, maybe putting Russia in Sweden is the right answer here maybe that Russia can help you and support Denmark to hold you know yeah so ultimately that's the big advantage of the army build is that it it takes it it. Uh, it improves your diplomatic situation by creating possible allies um, that if it would it could uh, alienate people and also force you to go for Sweden, right? So, if uh, if you have a knife, you're going to use it, as they like to say. Right. Okay. Um, let's see uh, what happens here in O2. So here, spring of O2. 
Um, another, uh, let's say, not so good turn for Austria, who moves to Tyrolia, tries to support um, himself back to Trieste, but without the support of Vienna, it does not work. And instead um, is piffed by a collaboration, uh, not piffed, but displaced by a collaboration between Russia and Turkey and then retreats to Greece. Italy. Yeah, that's uh, Pretty bad. Yep. So Italy tries to convoy to Alb Albania. Yep. And um, so, okay, so Vienna supporting this movie, it wouldn't have worked anyway because um, Albania was cut. Huh. Chris, let's uh, break this turn down then. Who, uh, who wins in the East here? Um, Turkey looks great with the move to the Black Sea, the move to the Aegean, and putting both armies out there. They're certainly going to be able to pick up Greece if they want to. I mean, whoever wants to, they're going to take Greece between mm -hmm. them, right? Um, and this may well be a situation where Italy uh, has stabbed Turkey only, has stabbed Austria only to get run over themselves. Um, because now there's, if that army makes it to Albania for some reason, then maybe they have a better chance of holding their position. But heck, Vienna could just move to uh, to Tyrolia to Venice and encourage you know Russia to move through Budapest to take Trieste. There's there's uh, ways to as Austria to say, well, guess what? I'm dragging you down with me, Italy. So although, yeah. yeah. Although unfortunately, with Vienna open, um, uh, Italy would have a retreat to Vienna here. Um, yeah, fair, fair. But still, right now their units are out of sync. Russia follows in. Moscow goes to Galicia. They don't hold Vienna next year, right? With that, it's just bad. But boy, Russia um, in Sweden here, unlikely to lose it. Um, yep. And picking up Budapest here. Turkey getting uh, one or two. This is this looks except for the fact that there's a Turkish fleet in black rather than on its way out into the med. Uh, this looks like a monster juggernaut, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Um, and, and look at what England did up in the north as a kind of a counterbalance to that. Uh, England held on by England Skagrak, bounce in the North Sea, uh, just all in on, on anti-Germany before they had even got Scandinavia secured, right? Um, this is... Um, this is going to be an interesting year uh, because Germany thought that they were in an alliance with England and were supporting, it looks like, the convoy into Belgium, which would have worked not for nothing. But England decided they would rather work with um, France. Yeah, the, the, the supporting the convoy with uh, the move from Denmark to North, it's interesting, right? If the if North is convoying, then the move doesn't make any difference. So it's a little bit of, of bet hedging from Germany. Um, yep. Okay. Let us, uh, Siobhan, any, uh, any further thoughts here? Shall we move to? Um, love on the RT. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh my God. Sorry, I was distracted with the. Yeah, no, no problem. I should have let you go. All right, so here is fall of 1902. Um, we've got uh, Russia and England collaborating against Germany. France uh, moves into the Western Med rather than joining in an attack on England. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Turkey does indeed get Greece. Black Sea goes to Khan to move that fleet out. I mean, and oh, it's brutal. Um, that picks up Vienna and Budapest. So that's it for Austria, yeah? This is, yeah. Austria goes out in 1902, for those of you who have that on your bingo card. Yeah. Um, have fun. Russia <laughs> Russia picks up three builds in 1902. Oh, it's pretty good. Goes and from, they put England into Denmark. So Norway is, uh, yeah. So they've got they've got some decisions to make with builds. Uh, what would you, yeah? What would you build here if you're Russia? Let's get some build proposals. Okay. Big strategic decision here, right? Big indication of strategic direction. Oh, 
Oh, army, okay. Army, Fleet St. Peter, South Coast. Is it South Coast? South Coast, yeah. Okay, yeah. I um, and that's that with their trip to the Baltic. Uh, you, in hindsight, I would rather not have put England into Denmark, um, given yeah. how well it went. And now that I'm immediately going to be attacking Germany from here, um, but uh, yeah, maybe even just hell with it and North Coast. But that's picking a fight really early. I, I mean, look at. I agree. I think so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think there needs to be a fleet, but I would not put it in the North Coast this early. Yep. Um, I mean, having a second fleet in the Baltic area is pretty nice for Russia, isn't it? Um, yeah. If, you know, if there's no units in Norway to have to worry about. Uh, what do you guys make of yeah. uh, moving to the Western Med here? This is a bit of a surprise move. Yeah, I was um, going to say... Um, sorry, Chris, I'm just going to... Um, we thought England and France were teaming up against Germany, but France seems to want no part of that German fight, um, which is going to make it really slow for England. And Western Med, anxious about Italy? Mediterranean Sea was just sitting there. Yeah. And um, the story yeah. of the Western Med says, holy crap, look how quickly RT are advancing. Mm -hmm. I better be ready to prop up the Ionian. Right? Yeah. It's 1904, 1903. Oh, God. Um, so that's getting there early. And what else are you going to do with those fleets if you're not, you know, Germany isn't attacking England. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you roll up against England by yourself here. Uh, right. Put down a fleet in Marseille or an army in Marseille and um, try and get some of those Italian dots before Turkey gets there. And hold off as long as you can, yeah. All right. Let's, um, see, what, let's see what happened here. Quick uh, question for you, Brandon. Um, do you have anyone in the waiting room? Yes, we have Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Let's uh, let's just wanted to make sure that she was actually in the right place. Yeah, I'm gonna actually step out for a minute and uh, get some extra DMing stuff done here, and we'll welcome Tanya in. All right. So, see you in a bit, Chris. And hello, Tanya Gill. Hey, can Hi. you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, hey, Tanya. great. Tanya, uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, I'm Tanya, and I play diplomacy sometimes. <laughs> That's kind of. I'm from Canada. Yeah. I, I can't really fill in uh, Chris's shoes, but maybe I can say interesting comments. I don't know. We'll you see. Have better audio than Chris did, so. Oh well, that wasn't. That's not a very high bar. So. <laughs> so uh, Tanya, how long have you been playing uh, diplomacy? Mm, I think I started in 2015, so about five years. But um, face to face for three, maybe. Yeah. How did you How did you come to diplomacy? What hooked you? Uh, so actually someone from my debate club uh, played quite a bit online and then he got everyone to play and really like I played one game and then I was I was hooked I just couldn't stop so that's really it <laughs> real quick what is it that you like though can you can you summarize it I love strategy and on top of that I love social deduction slash manipulation games so I think like diplomacy is a perfect mix of both of those that's what makes it fun though i can't say my strategy is as good as my uh <laughs> diplomatic c capabilities but w w we're well, getting I, better so i think the people who've been on boards with you would beg to differ so <laughs> yeah. I, won't, uh, I won't raise your hackles by mentioning you know what but uh tanya has had success uh in the face-to-face -face hobby and a lot of success online from what i've been told um moderate, <laughs> moderate. good um, all right, well, do, uh, do you want to look at some games with us? Yeah, that'd be great. So I've we been were, following, so let's see. I can't. We were just Go looking ahead. at this one. We just spent a year with this one. We're gonna, I, Siobhan, I think we're gonna have to start moving a little more quickly. Um, we're, yeah. Our pace is a little bit more like our what we're used to with the other games. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, look at the builds here real quick, and uh, we do have the, the fleet North Coast um, with uh, with Russia, which was the surprise. Um, but and a fleet south coast or fleet Marseille here for yeah. uh, for France, but also fleet uh, Edinburgh for England. So it looks like uh, England knew that uh, conflict with France was on its way. With Russia, yeah. Here we've got Austria, uh, Liam Stokes, England, Tony Bilzi, France, Russ Dennis, who is the um, uh, who is behind the diplomacy briefing. Uh, which is a weekly newsletter that um, has quickly sort of uh, become a, a leading 
point of focus for advertising diplomacy goings on, uh, especially online and face-to-face uh, -face tournaments. Uh, and hopefully we're gonna get Russ on the, on the live stream at some point later on. In Germany, we've got Eric Hunter, Italy, Conrad Woodring, a uh, well-known hobby player, Russia, Chris Brand, former world champion, Chris Brand. And in Turkey, we've got Brian Sheldon, who is uh, who everybody knows if you've <laughs> ever gone to a tournament anywhere. Um, all right, what do we got here? Siobhan, it's your turn. Oh, um, Russia jumps out at me right away. Moscow to Livonia, um, Warsaw to Ukraine, lack of a bounce in Galicia, um, fine bounce in black. <laughs> Um, what's with the misorder of Smyrna? Oh, because it's an army. Um, <laughs> From Brian Sheldon, who uh, knows better. If I have the story correct, Chris Martin called Brian Sheldon, woke him up, and got him to play. So yeah, we, we were short about 10 players for this 11 board round. Uh, people just didn't show up. They forgot that it was happening. They failed. They mm -hmm. Something happened, right? And so we had, I think, five standby players waiting by. But then as we got in and started assigning people and people started signing up, we were like, person missing, person missing, person missing. And so we like really went deep onto the benches. So big, big thank you to Brian and all of the replacement players who came in to step up so we could get this full 11 board going on. Yeah. And a special thanks to Brian for this. <laughs> Army Smyrna to Aegean. So far, definitely the leading candidate for best move order spring 01. Yeah. <laughs> but let's let's talk about Chris Brand for a, just a second before we move on, because we're definitely going to have to come back to this, because I, I've called Chris Brand the master of the what the fuck move that worked <laughs> out. And this is like, this is a huge what the fuck move opening, yeah. right? Um, yeah, so what are the what are the advantages of opening to Livonia here, Siobhan? I mean, if you think you're not getting bounced in Sweden, you could convoy an army over there. If you have, I mean, I don't know. I don't like it, but I don't know. I would never do it, personally. I don't I have, have a thought here. Hang on. I'm pushing in. Um, okay. The best time to do this is when you think Germany is going to open to Holland. Yeah. So that you can convoy to Sweden. Or when Germany has flat out told you that he's going to bounce you out of Sweden um, and you want to be you know, moderately aggressive. Uh, it's, it's one of those moves that kind of keeps that army in play, says I'm not being super aggressive in the south. I'm not coming after Norway to England, so England has some flexibility. It's definitely not a, a beginner's move, but uh, from Chris Brand, I'm not at all worried that it's going to cost him. <laughs> Matt Shield says the advantage is it's a terrible opening. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, uh, would you? What, what do you think the odds are of Bothnia to Baltic and Livonia to Prussia here in the fall? Um, it would depend entirely upon the negotiations, right? Mm -hmm. If Germany tells me, "Yeah, I'm out of Sweden," then yeah, all day. You know, um, what do you got to lose? On the other hand, um, seeing it either step up to St. Petersburg, you know, given what looks like a pretty aggressive English northern opening, uh, depending on the diplomacy, you know, I could see this Russia expecting to get one or no builds from this. Um, but with a moderately friendly Austria, you know, lots of stuff could happen. You got away with uh, DMZ in Galicia. Um, I'm going to put a vote in for convoy to Finland, just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah, the convoy is also there. Um, the comment saying, hey, isn't St. Petersburg better even if you want to convoy to Sweden because you have the option of going to Norway? Um, tactically, it gives you more flexibility. Diplomatically, it throws up all kinds of warning bells to England and almost guarantees that you're going to get an army in Norway convoyed over with support. Yeah. Yeah, and I think if you want to keep open this uh, aggressive attack towards Germany, you know, Livonia to Prussia, uh, having two units on Berlin, um, then uh, obviously you can't move to St. Petersburg if uh, if you want to keep that open. So this is this should be interpreted as anti-German. I think we're all in agreement on that. Uh, I think probably yes, and I'm also going to agree with Matt Shields in the comments. Um, Chris Brand likes making deliberately weak moves to keep people off balance. I was going to comment that Chris Brand invokes a lot of like fear in people lately, and so he just sort of like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to Mm. And it usually works out in his favor. 
That's how he won a world championship, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. By misordering his way into it. Yeah. It, it, and let's be clear, Chris, we are this is we mean this as a compliment, right? Because oh. it's the it's your ability to um uh to convert a mistake or even the appearance of a mistake into uh, commanding uh, results. So uh, the master of the what the fuck move that works out. Uh, exactly. Now the German one. Yeah. Sheldon doing the delayed Matt Sundstrom. Yeah. Well, he figured out that uh, Smyrna is an army. Not yeah, a yeah. I'm <laughs> not convinced that that wasn't intentional in spring. I, in this case. I'm, I'm 80% sure it was intentional, yeah. <laughs> but only 80%. <laughs> English Army goes to Belgium. Please don't die there. That's where English armies. Yeah. Okay. Um, the non-convoy to Tunis here is interesting, especially given the Turkish moves. Mm -hmm. uh, have, as Turkey, you you know, not that following up to Constantinople maybe gives Italy the freedom to feel like they can do that, because if that con if that had been a convoy and I was Turkey, I would now be really worried about uh, an AI showing up and kind of doing a lot, so. Yep. Yeah, which we've seen in one of the, in another game where uh, Austria was supporting uh, mm -hmm. uh, Turkey and Romania uh, only to, to push back. Okay, let's move forward here. We've got lots of armies plus a few fleets. Um, okay. And then here is spring of 1902. I'll let you guys talk about this. I'll be right back. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm doing a little GM thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got Turkey who went all in for the anti-Russian, losing Romania to Budapest, retreating to Galicia, which was the only viable option, bouncing Bulgaria, which is still neutral, let's note. Tried to support himself to Sev, didn't work as expected. Um, oh, let me try and make sense of all those tiny arrows in the lowlands. Holland goes to Belgium. With support from Ruhr. Okay. But Munich was supporting Ruhr to hold, right? Belgium went to Ruhr with support. You can't right. cut support for an attack on yourself. Yeah. So that attack moves forward. Okay. Um, seems like the English player to some degree knew this was coming with North going to Helgoland. Um, Chris Brand takes Sweden with the fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if you're England, wouldn't you rather have the army in there? I think I would. But... I would rather the army had rolled to Prussia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would have yeah. been. Awesome. But uh, he does have a Turkish army in uh, Galicia now. So yeah. Yep. Um, none, you know, the ask here would be, hey, support Helgo and Bite to Denmark, right? If you're, mm -hmm. if you're England and you're saying, hey, Russia, give me a solid. Yep. That yeah. would be natural. Yeah, which uh, should be, yeah, it would be, well, it's not necessarily, yeah, it is guaranteed. I'm sorry. What am I talking about? Okay. Um, and then uh, Austria does the, uh, the double, the two step with Turkey here. Mm -hmm. uh, although that may not necessarily be, uh, this actually could be part of a, a an AT here, um, right? You would expect Serbia to be the mover instead of Budapest if that was the case? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think Italy's in a really interesting position here, so I'd like to see where that goes. Uh, just with all the chaos that's happening around him. Um, that's Conrad Woodring. He's been out of chaos. Yeah. All right, let's look at uh, fall here. Or not. Hey, <laughs> hey, look at that, uh, that uh, bounce in Bulgaria. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, this is mostly a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, Rota, 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 uh, doesn't look like it wrote a support order for the move to Bulgaria, which is funny, because it should have, even though it was cut. Romania supported Sevastopol. Yeah. Again, the vicious, because Ukraine wasn't going to be able to be able to do that? That's fine. Because Galicia could have cut Ukraine. Yeah. Oh, this oh is yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Fair. 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 Yep. That was yeah. where I thought they could have been doing a you know a clever AT yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But yep. uh, I mean, Sheldon's certainly capable of that kind of uh, that kind of AT. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you think of that? She did not support Helgo and Bite to Denmark, although that was the ask. That was the ask. Oh, we have a pull through. Uh, a brace, as some people call it. 
Well, yes, yeah, Sweden supported Helgeland Bight to Denmark. Holland supported Denmark to Helgeland Bight. Yeah. Okay. Very clever on Eric Hunter's part. Do we know anything? Do we know anything about Eric Hunter? No. Uh, Eric is a very solid player. He's been playing face to face for you know longer than I have, and he is very loudly bitching that he cannot type his orders in anywhere. If only he could type his orders in. Actually, both he and Brian Sheldon are on the same page about that. Right. Give me a text interface. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, real quick, what do you guys make of the uh, the fleets holding here? Uh, what does that tell you about strategy? Uh, Siobhan? Yeah. Disappointingly indecisive. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you pick one side or the other and go for it, right? Really? Um, I mean, okay. How come it's all right for other players to slow play? We don't mind that. You know, but you're not picking a side. You're not going after Italy. You're not going after England. Okay. You're holding your forces where you can do something with them. Now, would I rotate to maybe Spain south coast of the Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, maybe. Right? But, like... You've got total flexibility to choose where you strike next year from here. That's okay. That's absolutely very, a very fair critique is, you know, we've been applauding a lot of slow play in other games and some even objectively ridiculous and bad orders. Andrew Goff, I saw you with your bounce in Albania. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. Well, Let's what do you, I mean, I, I, it's funny. I want to, I really want to go into a little bit deeper here. Like what, um, what what is the strategic direction here for for France? How does France how does France top this board? Even I, I know that's not the right question to ask, but um, Chris, why don't you take that one? Where is where uh, does France's growth come from? From here, it's about diplomacy, not about tactics. Yeah. France has the ability to gain force ground with armies, has the ability to gain ground with fleets. Um, in your perfect world, you replace England and then capture everything north of Munich. But that's that's a purely diplomatic concern at this point. Uh, is Germany going to let you get away with that? Is England weak enough to let you get away with that? Uh, running in on Italy uh, is, is it's too early to do that, right? There's no Western triple. You expose your back, somebody will jump on you. So sometimes as France, you're forced to play. This is kind of an Italian kind of position, which yeah. you hate. You'd rather be aggressive. As, I'd rather be aggressive as France. Um, but suppose he'd shown up in the English Channel in the North Atlantic Ocean there. And what would that have netted him? Um, I guess if he'd actually set it up with Mid-Atlantic Ocean, North Atlantic, he could get convoy Gascony away. But, I mean, there's an English army in Picardy, and there's no guarantee that he picks that up. Yeah. Now that you do that, you're pretty safe. I think if, you, I think if you're France and you knew, you knew beforehand that England was going to be pulling a unit rather yeah. than uh, staying even or even getting a build, then, you know. If but, you roll north, maybe he picks up Hell and Bite and keeps that army. Exactly. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's push ahead another year here. Um, yeah, yeah, just force the position forward is France. This Italy is says Turkey is helpless, I'm going to roll. Italy moves all of his units forward one space. Great, great tempo gain for Italy. Um, this wow. is very, but this is still very, um, it's still very cautious from France, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait and, and, wait and no, see. No sign of any teamwork. Right, that long-term sign for France. Yep. And um, uh, yeah, the AI goes into full effect here. Presumably, this is uh, yeah. Presumably, this is part of an AI. Yep, yeah, agreed. Especially with the East Med move, uh, yeah. which can't, which now cannot be stopped. So Turkey's just on life support from here. Yeah, he pulled um, in the adjustments. He pulled Armenia rather than Galicia, yeah. um, which uh, actually feels like a it's a non-surprising thing for Sheldon to do, but yep. it's it's a bit of a Sheldon has a tendency to um, want to stick it to you if you uh, cross him rather than... Well, and also sort of go big or go home, right? Yep. That unit's got tempo. It's got things that he can do. He can negotiate with it. If he just does turkey and turtles up, uh, you know, they're just going to come and kill him eventually. So yeah. at least there's some talk here. Well, there are a lot of players who actually are happy to turtle up as turkey and yep. uh, just sure. sit around and then try to rebound. And with a, with a draw-based system, you know, there's, I think, more incentive to do that. But Brian Sheldon is not one of those people. So here we go, fall of 1903. Um, Italy is the one who gets the dot. Turkey. This actually shouldn't be possible here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, so Turkey supports himself into Romania. It looked at first, so Sev also supports Ukraine into Romania. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if, if it had only been Sevastopol supporting Ukraine into Romania, then the, the move, should not, uh, move should not succeed. But Bulgaria was also supporting it. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, this is a bit of a curious, um, although this was an Austrian dot, I think. Uh, I believe, it, yes, it was Austrian. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, treading water. What about uh, in the West here? Okay, France takes Belgium whole lot of bouncing everywhere else. And Italy self bounces on Munich. Curious play here. Yes, so that Munich could cover Berlin, but Munich wouldn't be threatened in case Burgundy wanted to take a swing at it. Yeah, I mean, if you're supporting, if you're expecting support, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's not aggressive enough for me from that position. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, interesting tactics here. I, I, I think this is going to end up being um, just a, a mistake. So Germany supports Skagerrak into Denmark from Kiel, but also supports Ruhr into, Hol into Kiel from Holland. So, yeah, he was trying for the brace brace again. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he, presumably, I think he meant to do Kiel to Denmark with Skagerrak support um, and, and the follow here. I don't think... Uh, the the combination of these orders doesn't make sense, I don't think. Hmm. Okay. I mean he's not putting he's not cutting his own support, but um I mean yeah, otherwise you would just have Ruhr support Kiel and send Holland to Helgoland or something like that. Um Okay. Anyway, okay. So what about the overall strategic situation? Let's look at the uh, at the fall. Mm -hmm. Who do you who would you want to be here? Who's what's the uh, it's you know it's even and it looks like it looks like there's been a lot of fluidity in the alliance structure. Um, Austria and Italy have gotten well together, but uh, everything else seems to be fluid. Yeah. Um... I'm not loving a ton of the positions here, and I don't have a great read on what I think is a solid game-long alliance. While we have the AI, I don't know how long it'll last. Um, I guess, I guess France. I guess. I mean, no one's attacking him, right? So. <laughs> no one's attacking him. I mean, I don't think he's made me huge enemies. Uh, this is where you swing those fleets to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, North Atlantic Ocean, right? Um, and convoy an army up north. Um, not a lot of risk. Yeah. You know? Or maybe you swing south. Maybe you're the hat up with England for a little bit and, and go after Italy now. It's got to be one or the other, right? Yeah, you think. One of, them, one of them has to happen now. I mean, the fleet build of Marseille seems to indicate that he's picking uh, Italy as a target. but uh, Maybe. Could just be a slight. Yep. Yeah, yeah. faint. I should say. It's a, I have to have a fleet there because Italy's going to build one, but my other two can set up the convoy to Clyde. Yeah. Or Liverpool. You're going to attack England, right? Um, you know, you lie to him and you do it with a stab. That's the that's got to be the theory. But you know, if you're England and you don't move like London to Wales or London to Yorkshire here, then you're kind of a sucker. They have to go to one or the other. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and you bought some trouble with Russia here by not, by trying to take Sweden instead of taking the guaranteed St. Pete as England. Yeah. Take the guaranteed dot. Don't try and be cute. Help yourself. Help yourself first. In Austria, Mitch McConaughey, who is uh, also a tournament GM, well-known to people in the hobby. England, Caleb Winters. France, Adam Jummins. Germany, another former world champion, Nicolas Sahuguet. Um, Italy, we have Andrew Case. Russia, Tommy Anderson, who's active in our online community, and Turkey is Yaramir Sulya. Um, all right, what do we got here? Quick note that uh, Mitch is not actually in the game in 1901. Uh, spoiler, he's a replacement player for Austria, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, all right, so uh, Chris, what do you see here? Uh, I see that this is, a, this is maybe the most standard of openings that we've seen. The lone exception here being, again, the move to the channel, right? Mm -hmm. Bouncing Galicia, bouncing the Black Sea, uh, uh, Ionian and Apulia, uh, Serbia and Albania, 
a very standard German opening. The only thing that's even preventing this from just sort of being a textbook vanilla face-to-face -face online game, face-to-face uh, -face game is the, the London to the English Channel. And I just got to tell you guys, thank you so much. It really blows <laughs> my soul that you keep the, the fleet in London move to the English Channel so often. Well, you were asking earlier this morning if anyone even listens to your advice, Chris. So I think you better answer. Yeah. Let's see how well England's do in this tournament. <laughs> For those who don't know, um, Chris Martin is the author of a very well-known paper on uh, encouraging openings to uh, the English Channel from France, uh, from England, rather. Um, so uh, maybe, if you're lucky, we'll get to hear him tell us why. Um, reminder that even though you see Mitch's name as Austria, he was actually not yet playing Austria at this point. He jumped in as a replacement. That will become clear as you see the fall 1901 NMR. Yep. Okay. And I don't even think we should talk about this yet. Let's just roll through mm -hmm. 1902. Frank, Irish, blah, blah, blah. Double mm -hmm. fleet from England. Fleet North Coast from Russia. Oh, I like Fleet North Coast here. Yeah. Strong build. Yeah, I like a lot. Um, yeah, and especially with uh, with with this here, you've got you've got a lot of flexibility here as Russia. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Daniel, I see you in the comments. We'll go to that one after this. Uh, okay. okay. So another NMR from Austria, yeah. right. and that one he was out. So the rule in this game was in this tournament was one NMR is a warning. After the second NMR, you're out. Mm -hmm. um, and so. There was some, if, uh, if he had a disband or a build in the winter, we would have replaced him then. But, yeah. uh, and this player just abandoned. They walked out. We never heard from them again. We don't know what happened. I hope they're okay. That's yeah. the main thing. I hope that they yeah. just flaked um, and, and didn't have some kind of disaster strike. Yeah, yeah. At this point. It's a little too bad because it definitely imbalances the board here, right? I mean, yeah. this, this is a very, uh, a very nice and easy setup for Russia and Turkey. But it's incumbent on the West then to respond. And, uh, right. So far, it looks like they've responded with an EG. Yeah, that's yep. EG. Russia takes Norway, loses Sweden, takes up yeah. the rest this for now. Very, this is very passive from Italy. Italy must have uh, gotten uh, yeah. some uh, from Turkey. Okay. Let's just keep rolling. Here we go. Oh, Nikola, just watch him march those German armies. <laughs> yeah, choo choo, man. Yeah, that's a uh, really nice place to be, isn't it? Beautiful. And uh, note that uh, France doesn't pick up Spain because they walk out of it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Thinking that they're going to bounce Germany there. <laughs> Italy moves to Lyon. Um, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of support in the East. Um, yeah, surprisingly passive here. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we've put a new player in, which flips the dynamic of what was previously just an NMR in Austria. Yeah. But it's worth pointing out that if Austria had taken the double support, would Austria have gotten, Austria would have stayed even. Stayed at three, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here are the adjustments for this one. Um, looks like it's setting up quite nicely for Germany. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Note that uh, Germany didn't help England as much as they could have there. Oh, yeah. Um, what was the... Uh, it was uh, that I mean England must have said yeah you know what I'm just going to make sure that I hold. Um, oh Belgium, yeah, this is very uh, and not even try it for Sweden. Now they wouldn't have gotten it if they had tried, but yeah. Germany's just like yeah okay you, you yeah. do you <laughs> you do you <laughs> yeah yeah um, and now look at um, at England and this is where Nicolas says yeah okay uh, England is now going to lose Liverpool because of the way they attack the Middle Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. Oh brutal. Yeah. Yeah. England loses Liverpool. Germany takes Marseille. Italy supports Germany into Marseille. Into Marseille. Yeah. We've talked, we've seen other games where the top players were slow playing things. This does not feel like Nicola is slow playing this yeah. game. No, sometimes you just gotta go. Oh. I think he's, and that's the right choice to make here. Oh, look at him move to Silesia and Russia would be like, I like water, I flow around you. <laughs> But well, thanks, thanks to the move from Holland to Ruhr, you know, this is a, a savvy uh, defensive preemptive strategy mm -hmm. here. You can cover both of these or take a chance and go for, uh, you know, bouncing in Berlin while Galicia goes to Munich and you go to Warsaw would be pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tanya says, very Nicola to tell people you do you, and I can even hear it in Nicola's voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh. 
So Austria, we say goodbye to Austria. Elimination yeah. in 1903. Thank the, you, Mitch. The two-headed Austria. Yeah. Thanks for stepping in, Mitch, and uh, and doing that. Now, um, wild GMing games at the same time. So that yeah, was wild GMing games. Let's keep that. Yeah. France. France Rock. loses Paris, loses Brest, loses Marseille, picks up Liverpool. Keeps Portugal, so he's down to Spain two. remains neutral. Oh, Spain was neutral. Yeah. yeah. Spain. Oh, okay. interestingly, Italy and Germany. Uh, Could agree on who should get it. Presumably, Italy assumed it was his with support after being supported into. Uh, and we also have the agent of chaos, uh, France, uh, Piedmont to Turin's Tiroli. And we have, um, I'm sorry, England supporting himself into Holland. So this very entertaining all of a sudden. Very entertaining. Okay, let's do builds. And then I think I promised someone in chat that we'd move to mech deck next. Okay. Mech deck, and then we got some interesting stuff in the late game and one C. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Army Eddie, Army Kiel, Army Khan. Army Eddie is the only option here. Question yeah. is whether this is a stab or and represents future conflict. I mean, this, there's an army build here. So yeah, guess maybe, you're gonna uh, build a fleet from there, right? 